Now, many accuse this poor space Latvian to be biased towards Imperios, but I never! What would ever make you think I'm biased? Well, to appease some of you I've kidnapped, I mean invited an independent adjudicator to keep me in line. Say hello, buddy! Hey! You promised candy. Um, enough flip from you. I got you for one purpose, but before we get to it, the people need the second opinion on the Imperial Navy's pride and joy, the floating Viagra van. The Clipper. Okay, so the Clipper requires you to have Baron rank, so be prepared for a bit of a grind, and not the good kind. It also costs just a smidge over 22 million before you start upgrading it. So it's not cheap, but it's not overly expensive either. Investment, well made if you ask me. Right, when I first saw the ship I was like, Oh my, I'd like to hit that. The amount of Imperial basking that goes on when this ship is concerned is amazing. Once I even caught reddits and forums full of images of the ship and from the sidelines it looked like the most massive circle jerk I've witnessed. You can even call it the jizzing as the jizz was flying all over the place and by the end of the day everyone was literally swimming in the basking juices. That's gross. When it comes to exterior, the stretched out wings do make it look like a proper spaceship and the fantastic white color just adds to the level of gloriousness. Imperial master race if you will. Seriously. What other ship has those magnificent blue lines as accents? Oh my, the Basque. Just don't you just want to... Oh, hold on, I just can't take it. Well, I agree, the ship is classy as fuck. For me, it has some birth defects that just puts me off. For example, those landing feet. Seriously, they have to be the smallest ones of any ship. It makes me wonder. How do they even support the ship without braking? Also, that cranial thing on the top. It just makes the ship look like a Neanderthal inbred of ships. Much like those wankers ruling over that one particular country that don't know that the right side is the proper one to be piloted from. Seriously? Seats on the right side? Well, apparently the Brits made it to space after all, because half of these ships are backwards. Alright, so seat position aside, the interior of the Clipper screams high class, fancy pants imperial basking. I mean, just look at these chairs. They just scream. Your royal imperial ass will be most pleased with thine throne. But then there's the abundance of white colors and blue lighting, which the blue really does look nice. But you throw in a little bit of J.J. Abrams style lens flare and it looks like it came straight out of Compton- <clears throat> wrong movie. I actually mean the 2009 reboot of Star Trek. Universe breaking nonsense included. Also, we all know that Gudamaya is known for flowing lines and luxury ship design, but what I think they really need to be known for is, um, interesting shapes in and on their ships. I mean, look at these doors in the floor divider at the back of the cockpit. It looks a bit like a pecker, or like a pair of screwed up eyes with a real long nose. Speaking of dickheads, the clipper also has a multi-crew seat, so you can bring a friend for a mutual basking session. Now, as I take a look under the hood, all I find is a carbon copy of fed ass and drop ship. So, instead of repeating myself, I'll have Peroxim spout his two worthless American cents on the matter. Or do you prefer four half cents? Seriously, what the fuck's wrong with you guys? Everything. We have an orangutan for a president. Mm, fair enough. What makes Clipper really interesting is the fact that it's a multi-purpose, so it should be a decent jack-of-all-trades. Now, when I looked at Type 7, I did say that there is one ship that makes it obsolete, and that is Python. Well, the same applies here. Yes, yes, I want to fuck my Python so much I can't stop talking about how I'm gonna do it. But here's the thing, Clipper almost makes Type 7 obsolete as well. See, you can think of Type 7 as Clipper minus Cobra 3, but worse. Cargo Bay for Clipper competes with Type 7 when it comes to trading, and jump ranges for both ships are basically the same. So really you pay extra 5 mil and you get a multi-purpose ship that also is quite brilliant in few aspects and decent in rest. So, tell me again, why should you get Type 7? You shouldn't get a Type 7, when you can get the Clipper. Its armor might be a little bit weaker, but it makes up for it by being the fastest large-sized ship, alongside the Orca, and it's ridiculously maneuverable for a ship of its size. It does drift some, but nothing like those people in Tokyo, and it just gets better with a little bit of modding. And speaking of things that need mods, its shields are a bit on the weak side, but they do regen insanely fast, which makes it good for hit-and-run tactics or hybrid shield and hull tanks. Oh come on, Korea has more shields than Clipper, that's disappointing, at least to me. Uh, speaking of disappointments, I find the Clipper's weapons to be... Uh, lackluster. It packs a decent punch, but they're spread so far apart that fixed weapons are impossible to use. I mean, seriously, the gap is wider than the hookers, well, you know. 
Anyway. Now, the rank grinding that went on to get the ship was annoying enough, but once I got the ship, I was pleasantly surprised both by visuals and the performance. Honestly, I could not believe that a large ship could move that well. Still, the biggest surprise came when I hit that boost button. My gods, I think I just straight through my pants. I mean, come on, just listen to me. Now every time I fly this thing I need a new change of underwear and overalls. Costs alone are bankrupting me and that's the main reason I think twice before flying this thing. Seriously, Yamex, control yourself. Alright, alright, enough on my wardrobe malfunctions. The ship itself, performance-wise, in my eyes, is basically fed ash ship combined with dropship. Back in the day before NG, Clipper was arguably the best PvP ship as I recall it. But after engineer updates, some people start saying that the only thing it's good for anymore is mining. Which is not true. It's still a formidable combat ship. Sometimes even more so as you can improve it. Still, I'm fairly disappointed with its shields because I love a good shield tank and if Courier can have more of that then there has to be something wrong. I wouldn't say wrong, just different. Sure, just like what Alliance parents tell their children, right? Precisely. Anyways, kind of like how the assault ship is different than all the fed hunks of junk, this one stands out from other Imperial ships because it trades some of the Imperial shielding for a stronger hull. It is a bit of a departure from what Imperial pilots would be used to, but it's not so different as it appears. The ship blends decent jump range, good cargo capacity, high speed, and maneuverability. There isn't another ship in the game that achieves that at the level this one does. <coughs> what about Cobra 3 Python and Conda? Well, the Cobra is a small ship and has a high cargo for its size, but it also has weaker relative shielding than the Clipper does. Python does rather well, until you get to speed and maneuverability, which is really that ship's only drawback. But the Anaconda smashes the Clipper in overall usability for most people, but also comes at a far, far higher price tag, which puts the Clipper in a unique position to fill the needs of multi-role pilots without sacrificing speed or maneuverability. But all of this does come at the cost of wonky hardpoint placement and shielding that's as average as my high school grades were. So, would I buy this thing? Oh hell yes, worth every bit of that Imperial slave market. Which reminds me, we'll be heading there afterwards. Now, when it comes to the ship, really, there is only one phrase that would describe it well. A phrase that would encompass all the little things it's got. The swag wagon. When it comes to exterior, the stretched out wings do make it look like a proper spaceship and the fantastic white calm just adds to the level of gloriousness because, you know, that's why the ship is actually white. Ah, oh, crap. And another take. Oh, my cheeks! Oh, crap! 